minutes left in the fourth quarter. We get the fumble. We, we, we scoop it up. We think we got a chance to score. Uh, at that point, it's a tie game, you know, in the fourth quarter against USC, and we got momentum on our side, and so things could have changed right there. But, you know, we, we just got to keep battling. We got to start better than we have. You know, we keep digging ourselves in these holes and then trying to claw out of it. And if we start a little faster, maybe uh, we won't be in such a big hole and can can pull out these games at the end. Rashad, he's last few games. He's statistically been really good. It, it, from what you've seen, has he planned a lot better? Or? Yeah, you know he's continuing to progress as a player, and uh, he's making he's making plays for us. And uh, you know it's been great to see. You. We got a couple guys like that individually that have, you've seen them grow as the season goes along and improving in their individual techniques and making more plays. What what is it specifically? What kind of improvement has he made in the last? Well, month? you know he's he's been able to get a little bit better pass rush and to get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback. He's been able to make some of the tackles that earlier in the season that he missed. Uh, he's been a little bit better with his technique on the edge as far as taking on tight ends and tackles and being able to set the edge and come off and make plays for us. Yeah. Collectively, were you pleased with how your team's defense has kind of gotten better against Colorado and USC compared to maybe the first or the last couple weeks before that? Yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're slow, steady progress is what we're trying to get done, and, and we, you know, we'd like to have a little bit more jump in our improvement. And if we can eliminate some of the big plays, you know, the, 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 the big runs that SC had and a couple even the big pass plays, you know, that would go a long ways in helping us to have the kind of success that we have. You know I mean? If a team, you know, they score like USC did on the first drive, we may have to go 19 plays on the first drive. They earned it. You know, if they can go 19 plays and, and, and keep it going, they earned it. And if we can make them do it that way, then, then I think we're playing good defense. It's when they, they, they get the one-play drives or, the, you know, the big 60-yard, 70-yard runs or passes. Those are the kinds of plays that we've got to eliminate. Uh, you know, upon further review, is there anything that's maybe going to, you know, not being able to get off the field, getting that third down stop, and then maybe that long run is at the end of a, you know, long drive that kind of tires the guys out a little bit? Well, you know, there's not one thing, unfortunately, that you know, we could just focus in on that. You know, so, you know, SC broke a bunch of tendencies on third down. They ran the ball four times on third and seven plus, which they were they, they had zero rushing attempts prior to, to, to that in the games that we had taken a look at. And so uh, being aware, you know, I mean, that because our rush defense has not been as strong as we'd like it to be, that teams are maybe trying to take advantage of it and, and run the ball in those obvious passing situations. Speaking of that Stanford come or this on tap for this weekend, you know, they've always kind of been that run first team. They passed a little bit more this year. How much of a challenge is it going to be for a team that can kind of bring a lot of linemen in and run right at you? Yeah, you, they, they, they certainly have that in their, you know, in their Package. We're going to see more personnel groups from Stanford than probably any other team that we face this season. They they change up personnel constantly, and uh, and you have to be ready to play. Uh, you know what I call big boy football with the you know three and four tight ends out there, a fullback out there, and then they're also going to be able to spread you out, put three wide receivers out there, and so we got to adjust and adapt to whatever game and style that they want to play. You've had four freshmen play pretty much the entire season. What, specifically, what sort of improvement have you seen from them from, from that first game to to now? Oh, you you see a bunch. You know, I mean, those guys early on they were pretty wide eyed and wet, wet behind the ears and and trying to figure it out. And now we got you know, some of those guys are playing some of our better football for us on defense. You know, Matthew Tago is one example. He's playing really well right now for us at outside backer. You know, you know Isaiah Tufaga. You know, at inside backer. You know, he's he's been a solid contributor for us. And you know, Hodgins. You know, I mean, we just more and more guys are, 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 are they're, they're getting better and they're, they're growing and which we don't, which is what we want to see throughout the course of the season that they're better in, in in week 10 than they were in week one speaking of Stanford's passing game obviously their wide receivers are huge they're just about tight ends out there how do you kind of teach your DBs to compete with that we go on to a stretch rack to try to lengthen out our <laughs> DBs that's been part of our progress all week long uh, no, unfortunately you know I mean it's Knowing that they're going to throw a lot of the high balls and the jump balls and trying to get guys in position to uh, go and play it. But at some point in time, some of those things, you know, their guy's bigger than our guy. And they've done an unbelievable job all season long. You know, you look at the, some of the contested catches they made against Oregon when they had that come from behind win. Um, you know, there's DPs all over them and right next to them. And they can just out rebound you, basically, for lack of a better term. And, you know, we're going to have to try to battle and, and compete and try to separate their hands when they come down with the football to get it out because, they, you know, we don't have any 6-7 corners and they got some 6-7 receivers out there. Bryce Love hasn't had the season that he maybe envisioned coming into it with an ankle injury, but still, what can he, what does he bring to the table and what do you guys have to prep for for a guy like him? Yeah, well, obviously going into the season, he was one of the, you know, top five Heisman Trophy candidate list guys. 
and he's a dynamic football player. And uh, if he gets open space, he can take it to the house. And uh, you know, so we just got to be, you know, obviously aware of where he's at. And uh, when he's running the football, we got to try to get multiple hats to him because it's gonna be hard for one guy all alone to bring him down.